Hey everyone, Darren here from Skills Academy and I am so excited that you just took the test on the temperaments or the personalities. This test is actually your first step in not only understanding yourself better, but in understanding all of those people that are around you, that's correct. And this is not only gonna benefit you in the workplace, and we're gonna show you how that's gonna happen, but this is gonna benefit you all through life. So get ready, there's just gonna be a few minutes this video, and we're gonna to explain to you the four different temperaments. Can't wait to get started. So first of all, where did the temperaments come from? Well, back circa 300 to 400 BC, Hippocrates actually did a medical study, and you know, medicine back then wasn't what it is today, but he did a study and tried to figure out the four temperaments that people are born with, or what we call the four God-given personalities. And of these temperaments, there are the sanguine, there is the melancholy, there is the choleric, and there is the phlegmatic. But we're not gonna use those names. We're actually gonna to refer to them once in a while, but we're gonna see if we can relate these temperaments to actually animals and see if that helps you understand it just a little bit better. So here we go. So the first personality we are gonna talk about is the otter personality, okay? And Hippocrates would have called this the sanguine personality, but we're gonna use the otter instead. And if you think of an otter, an otter is just like a happy-go-lucky animal. They're always playing, they're very playful, they love to have fun. And this is how the sanguine personality really is in life, okay? So otter people, right, or people that, that have this otter temperament in them, these are the people that are just full of life. They are full of energy. They never met a stranger, okay? My wife happens to be like 90% otter, okay? She's way up there on the otter scale. And we always say she never made a stranger. I mean, this is the type of person, she goes into the bathroom, comes out with three friends. Typical otter, okay? If you ever wanna go into a party or go into a room and spot the otter, it's very easy. All you have to do is look for the person that has a crowd of people around them and they're probably telling them a story. And not only are they telling them a story and they're laughing, having good times, they're using their hands, they're using their body language because otters love to blow up stories, right? When you hear about the, the fish story that was like this big, but they tell you it was this big, typical otter, okay? Otters are just great people. They are full of energy. They actually get their energy from other people, okay? So if you know an otter, they need to have people around them, right? If my wife is doing a project here, here at home or at our business, we own a restaurant, she needs people around her. She does not want to be alone, okay? Even if she's just on the phone with them, she can't do a project alone. It has to be with people. Okay, years ago when GM came out with like OnStar in the car, it was pretty funny. She'd be driving along, she'd hit the OnStar button, they'd come on you know, on the car and say, hey, do you need directions or what's wrong or what, what can we do for you? And she's like, oh, I just wanted to say hi. And I used to say, Nancy, you can't just like talk to these people, they're, they're here doing a job. Well, I was wrong about that because that otter would get those people talking and next thing you know, they're on the phone for half an hour chatting. Okay, so that is a typical otter personality. If you are having a party or having a function and you want it to be a success, be sure you invite some otter people to that function because these are the people that make it lively. These are the people that make it fun. Okay, so otters, they are just fun people. They're fun loving, always smiling, very enthusiastic, okay? Otters in the workplace, they are great starters. They are great initiators. If you have a project that you wanna get done, give it to an otter and they will wrangle all the people around them. They'll get people signing up for this and before you know it, you'll have a whole crew ready to go. But then watch, and the otter will probably hand that project off because their attention span is limited, okay? They like to do things for like 45 minutes to an hour. They wanna get something started and then they're on to the next project. Even though all their friends are here on this project, that's okay. They'll go outside, they'll make new friends, okay? So they're not worried about that. Um, otters are typically a little bit disorganized, okay? So if I wanted to call my wife right now and say, hey, I'm filming this video for you know Skills Academy and we're talking about Otter, so I wanted to get you on the phone and talk to you, she probably wouldn't answer the phone. Not because she doesn't want to talk to me, she just doesn't know where her phone is, <laughs> right? And even if she does know where it is, she probably didn't charge it last night, so the phone is probably dead, okay? Typical Otter, 
right? Otters don't remember where they parked their car. They don't remember where their car keys are, even if they did know where their car is. Typical otter. Okay, so otters are fun-loving people. They're too busy with people and smiling and having fun then they all worrying about the small details in life, like where are my keys and where did I park my car? Typical otter. Do you know an otter in your life? If you do, I bet they're a lot of fun to be with. So that's otter. Okay, so we just finished talking about the otter. Let's talk about the polar opposite of the otter, where the otter was an extrovert, this personality type is gonna be an introvert, okay? Total polar opposites, but this is one of the reasons why they attract. So the personality I'm talking about, Hippocrates referred to as the melancholy personality. We are gonna call them the beavers, okay? And the reason we're gonna call them the beavers is because melancholies are always busy. They're always busy doing something. And these are the people who not only wanna do something, but they wanna do it right. Okay, these are the people that when, when we buy something at the store and we come home, my otter wife, she just wants to dump it out and let's start putting it together. Let's start, let's just start assembling something. Me having a lot of beaver in me, what do I do? I go for the instructions, okay? Beavers actually read the instructions. Not only do they read the instructions, sometimes they rewrite the instructions to make it go better, right? And then we'll mail those into the factory and say, hey, there's a way you could improve on your product typical beaver, okay? Beavers, they, they're they very detail-oriented, okay? So these are people that like to work, number one, alone. They don't draw their energy from other people. They, they could work by themselves, no problem at all. They love spreadsheets and numbers and jobs that take an extended period of time. Where the otter has a short, short attention span, the beaver has a long attention span. Okay, so we could work on a project for two, three days, two, three months, it doesn't make a difference, okay? In life, beavers, these are your accountants, these are your lawyers, these are your analysts, these are all people who are that beaver type personality, okay? Sometimes if you have too much beaver in you, you could actually be a little bit of a perfectionist and that could be a bad thing to deal with, right? So be careful of that if you're a beaver and you scored high in that category. We like things done a certain way and sometimes, especially if we're hanging out with an otter, they don't really care. <laughs> they, they don't care that you want it done a certain way. They're just good enough getting it out the way it is, okay? Because they're too busy having fun while we're too busy looking at the details. Okay, so beavers, the world loves beavers. We need beavers because again, these are the people who do things right. So if you're a beaver or you have a beaver in your life, let's honor them for what they do. So let's talk about the third personality type with a third temperament, and this is gonna be the lion, okay? And this is what Hippocrates called the choleric, but we're gonna call him the lion for right now. And lions, these are the leaders in life, okay? They are natural born leaders. These are people who become managers, CEOs, entrepreneurs. In the armed services, these are your captains, these are your sergeants, these are people who rise to the top level of any organization they're in. If you put them on a committee, they're gonna be the president of the committee. If you bring them into the workplace, they don't wanna just work there, they wanna run the place, okay? So they wanna run the department, they wanna run the division, they wanna run the company. And then once they're running the company, they wanna own the company, okay? Because people with high line in them, they don't want to take orders from anybody. They wanna be the ones giving the orders, right? One thing we always say is it's easy to get along with a lion as long as you're doing everything their way. Lion traits, you could see it from childhood, okay? When a little lion baby is born, they are probably in their crib, just holding onto the bars, telling you, as soon as I get out, I am taking over this family. I am taking over. So you could see these lion traits right from the beginning. As they grow up, lion children in school, they, they want to give the teacher a little bit of a hard time because they want things done their way, right? And if the teacher's not challenging them enough, they are gonna challenge the teacher, okay? Lions are the people who run 
this world, okay? If you're working for someone, you're probably working for a lion, okay? And if you own your own business and people are working for you, then you are a lion, I bet you. Okay, so we'll see what those test results look like. But the world loves lions, the world needs lions, and if you're a lion, we're here to honor you today as well. So the last and final personality that I wanna to talk to you about is what Hippocrates called the phlegmatic. And for us, we're gonna to relate to them as the G category or the golden retrievers, okay? Now, the reason we call them the golden retrievers is because as soon as I said golden retriever, I bet you you got a big smile on your face and you went, oh, like that. Because the whole world loves golden retrievers, right? They're just wonderful, they're loyal, they're honest. And this is how the golden retrievers are in life, okay? So if you score G in your category, we wanna honor you, okay? Because you are the people that keep peace in our lives. Golden Retrievers, they do not like conflict around them. They don't like drama, okay? They just want everybody to get along together, right? These are the peacemakers of our society. They are extremely loyal people. So if you have a Golden Retriever in your life, or if, if you scored high in Golden Retriever, you are an honest, loyal person, okay? They will never leave you. Um, Gary Smalley says they have stamped on their forehead, I will not hurt you. Okay, he also says they are the nerve endings of our society because they feel so much, okay? Um, golden retrievers, if they work for you in your company, they will work for you for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, until you actually either close the business or you retire them, they will be there, okay? Because they're loyal people, right? If, if you're in a relationship with a golden retriever, they're with you for life, okay? Whether they're a friend, whether they're a partner, um, a spouse, it doesn't matter because they wanna work things out, okay? They don't want conflict, they don't want controversy, it's not in them. These, in the workplace, they don't wanna run the company, they don't wanna be managers, they don't wanna be leaders, but they wanna do good work for you, okay? So these are the golden retrievers, the world loves golden retrievers, and we thank you for them, and we honor you. So now that's just a quick rundown of the four different personalities. And when you took your test, you scored highest in one and then possibly a second category. So you should have probably two dominant traits and then two lesser traits, okay? And everybody has a mix of all four of these, but it's your dominant trait that's really running you in life. And, and this is what's helping you get through um, your work every day. This is helping you be productive every day. Now, why is it so important that you understand this? Well, let's talk about the personalities in a workplace. In one of my businesses, I own a restaurant, I have a cook and his name is Chris, okay? And Chris is really my kitchen manager and he runs the kitchen. And even though he's the kitchen manager, he doesn't have a lot of lion in him, okay? He has enough to get the, to get the job done, but he has more golden retriever in him. And because of that, he keeps harmony in the kitchen. And in a restaurant, that's very hard to do, right? So my, my kitchen restaurant has a lot of harmony. It's a fun place to be. Um, and there's, there's no controversy going on. One day he wanted to hire another cook. And when he wanted to hire this other cook, I said, Chris, we could put him in the kitchen if you want, but he scored six points higher in Lion than you did. And the problem with that is in about 30 days, he's gonna have your job. And not because I'm gonna give him the job, he's gonna take it himself. And I can't stop that from happening. So while I do wanna hire this person, let's use him in a different spot in the restaurant because I need a lion somewhere else. And if I put him in the kitchen, there's gonna be a lot of controversy there. In some of my automotive repair shops, we use this because if you have someone like an otter with a shortest tension span, you can't put them on jobs that take a long time. Okay, so I can't put them on transmission overhaul jobs because they're too detailed and they take too long. I need a beaver for that type of a job. So understanding that helps me optimize my business operations because now I could put people in the correct positions. You know, years ago there was a book by Jim Collins called Good to Great. And that was a study of businesses that showed exponential growth over a very short period of time. And when they said, how did you do this? How did these businesses all show such growth in such a short period of time? That book could almost be summed up in two sentences. 
And what it says is we got the right people on the bus. And then once we were on the bus, we put those people in the right seats. And this is one way you could do that is by understanding the temperaments and the personalities. In your relationships, this is also very important for you to understand. Okay, because people like the otters, high extroverts, they are naturally attracted to the beavers because we're high introverts, okay? And one needs the other. When my wife and I go to a social function, I'm so glad she's there because I don't wanna be out talking with the people. So I could kind of send her out there and she represents our family and I could kind of hang back in the corner a little bit and maybe you know check the mail on my phone or something because I'm not a good social talker. I'm not that extrovert personality. So you'll find a lot of times otters pair up with beavers because they just do that naturally. Same thing with lions and golden retrievers. Okay, because lions wanna run everything. They wanna run the world. Where the golden retrievers, they want someone to run the world. They don't wanna be the one doing that. So again, they don't conflict with each other. Okay, and they actually attract each other. In friendships, it's important to know what your friends are. Okay, I have an otter friend and we kind of do some business back and forth a little bit, but when I talk to him about business, a lot of times he gets very volatile very quickly because as an otter, their emotions go high very quickly and then come low very quickly. They're up and down, up and down, up and down. Where beavers, we tend to run more flat. Okay, so sometimes I'll say something to him and when his answer to me is just totally not what you would expect from a person, but if you know they're an otter, then we could expect that. We could anticipate that. And when we do, maybe we'll approach the situation a little bit differently. So there's all great reasons why it's important for you to understand the four temperaments and the four personalities that exist in the world today. And by doing that, you'll get a better grasp on how to succeed in life. At Skills Academy, we incorporate these personalities through everything we do, through all the different courses that we teach. We're always helping students understand not only what they're interested in doing, but who are they? And how does that relate to this chosen field that they're going into? And where would the best point for them to be in that? So we're glad you watched this video today. If you're at a conference and you're watching this video, come see us in our booth and we can expand more on the personality traits and help you understand how you can succeed in life by knowing who you really are. Thank you and we appreciate you.